Toys from the 90s and early 2000s were on another level. In an era that didn't have cell phones or the internet handy 24 seven, we really had to figure out ways to utilize the technology already at our disposal. And of course we can't have kids sitting around playing video games all day. So how do we get kids up off their asses in a cool way? With barcode scanners, of course. No, I am talking about these bad boys. Scanners. Scanners were one of the coolest toys out there at the time. Like sure, Game Boy was cool, but it was kind of giving you tunnel vision into a world that, well, doesn't exist. So Scanners, in my opinion, was kind of like a version of Pokemon Go of the 90s, combining real world elements with a digital game. Essentially, you have your scanner, which look how cool this looks first of all, definitely giving the 90s boy toy aesthetic, and you would go around scanning various items barcodes to build up a team of monsters for battle. Now, obviously you could scan different items at home, but where this thing really shined was when you took it to the grocery store. Again, no cell phones back then, but of course you did have your Game Boy with you. Though now you're looking around thinking what would be a great item to scan to build your team? Do you focus on your favorite foods, cereal, pasta, diapers? Now not every barcode will give you a monster, and there are also monsters specific to each scanner that was sold, and each of those collections of monsters are known as a tribe. You following? And surprisingly, these things still work about 25 years later. Though before we dive into this, I did just want to say thank you for watching, and be sure to like, subscribe, and consider becoming a member for bonus videos in our archive of gameplays and live streams. So let's scan an item. Now in the instructions, it suggests scanning flat surfaces, as scanning curved or oddly shaped surfaces requires more skill and practice. So maybe throughout this video, I'll finally be skilled enough to scan some curved surfaces. But you also cannot scan anything that has a reflective surface on it, and you can't scan any digital codes on screens because that probably didn't exist yet back then. But a few different things can happen when you scan an item, and all you need to do is slowly, but not too slow, swipe the scanner from one side to the other. Then it will either give you a small heartbeat, meaning the code wasn't scanned properly, or in my experience, it can sometimes mean you have to scan it a few times for the monster or item to appear. Or it will give you a flat line, which means no signs of life. Or it will give you a big heartbeat, which will then send you into a battle, or simply add a monster to your team. And battles only happen when you scan the barcode of a monster from another tribe, and really the battles are like a super simplified version of battling in Pokemon. And while I'm not positive, in the instructions it says the only way to heal any of your monsters is by scanning the barcode that came on the comic insert that came with this, which I actually have, and check out these other ads for other Radica products in here too. Too funny. But while these scanners still work in 2024, are they still fun and occupy your grocery store time like they did back in 2000? Well, maybe. Maybe, but only if we utilize one of the features that I haven't even touched on yet, the versus mode. Because if you have a friend that has one too, oh, hey, Barrett. Hi. <laughs> you can link them up and battle. The only problem currently is that these guys are empty, so I think it might be time to head into the city to see what we can scan. Though before we did that, we actually needed to set up and get acquainted with our new scanner. And the instructions actually come with three barcodes to start off with guaranteed monsters. Monster acquired. <laughs> and if you remember Barrett, he and I actually went to high school together, and he is now a voice actor, having done stuff on Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. And he has a show out right now on Tubi, so go check it out. And check out when I surprised him with a Pokedex a while back. And it can be a tad tricky to get the barcodes to scan, but Barrett was actually getting the hang of it pretty quick. He actually told me that he had one of these when he was a kid, though I on the other hand was not having any scanning luck. I'm not really sure what I was doing wrong here, because I actually tested these out a couple weeks ago and everything was working fine, though Barrett was convinced something was wrong, and decided to call up the good old customer service number, which actually rang up Mattel because they acquired the makers of scanners, Radica, back in 2006. But we were still kind of coming up empty here here too. Yeah, I'm scanning my barcodes, but I'm not getting any monsters. What I was getting is a flat line, and it's not, it's usually supposed to go boop, or ideally boop, boop, and then you know you're getting a monster. You know what I mean? Like on the, on the scanner? 
And finally, we just said screw it and went out to Target. And pretty much the plan is to get as many monsters as we can and see who comes out on top in a battle. Now, neither of us really had a strategy going on going into this, but I would say that we generally gravitated towards stuff that was nostalgia worthy or stuff that we were just curious to see if it would scan into a kid's toy. And funnily enough, some of those did actually scan into it. And while I would say overall, we were having varying degrees of luck, I definitely was hitting my stride a little bit more than Barrett was, leaving him to think I rigged this whole thing and have us switch devices. I just can't believe you figured out my plan. Kidding, kidding. I mean, I tend to think that it might've been his item selection that might've been the problem. Though right when we did switch, he did immediately get a good scan. But ready for something new, we left Target for Five Below. Again, kind of looking for nostalgic type items, though they really have a little bit of something for everyone here. And I immediately went for the Funkos, but damn, the selection here is absolutely terrible. And with my new scanner, things really weren't looking too good for me. I couldn't even get Nickelodeon Slime to give me anything. Though maybe our scanning methods were rather peculiar, but everything from gongs to Spongebob to Shrek was giving me absolutely nothing. And while I was struggling, Barrett, on the other hand, was getting hit after hit. Even the knockoffs were giving him something. And I just needed to get out of there and get to our last stop, which I've featured on the channel before, my favorite comic book spot, The Forbidden Planet. Much better Funko selection here, might I add. Spirits were high, new location, new monsters. And while scanning another Funko seemed tempting, this strawberry shortcake had to be it. I mean, just screams the era, right? And, uh... Nope, and again, and again. Okay, maybe this is rigged, but I don't know who is doing the rigging, cause Barrett, just like that, another one, and another one. So I think I'll just have to take the L on this monster scanning hunt. I will say, reviewing this footage back, it's pretty funny to see just the anticipation on our face. Like there's this glimmer of hope, only to be let down. But here is who we are working with. and now ready to take down the enemy. We find ourselves in Planet Chaos. <laughs> I mean, my office, I guess. Home of three warring tribes, the Zendra, the Patak, and the Ujali. Equally matched and eternally stalemated, the three tribes were a constant war for world domination. <laughs> Again, whatever that all means, that was straight from the comic, and now we fight. Just kind of like that, yeah, I'm perfect. We went back and forth putting out our best monsters. Well, our only monsters. And each monster really only had one move, so this battle didn't really get too far. Though I really thought I was holding my own for a while, though to be honest, you really can't tell who's winning during one of these. There's just so much happening on screen, and each player's screen can also feature something different, and it also only flashes your HP for like a second after a move is done. So yeah, it's just a little bit of a jumbled mess. And really just like that, Barrett took it home and was crowned the Scanner's King. I guess those years you played growing up really did pay off, or it's rigged. Now, while these devices didn't really play nice throughout the day today, I still have to say I am a giant fan of these. They definitely took advantage of the technology at the time. And when you look at it, it just screams 90s. But let me know if you remember scanners in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm scanning my barcodes, but I'm not getting any monsters.